Flashback 7, Preparing for Worldwide Quests. Flashback 7.0, Preparing for the Worldwide Mission Quest. There we were, seated around the celestial white marble round table, telephone to heaven, to call upon the angels for help. We sat in ornate silver thrones that surrounded the table, each connected to the others through carved ley lines in the tabletop that passed through a carved Illuminati triangle framed eye as a sort of focal point centerpiece. We were preparing for the worldwide mission quest to stop Bale and his tapestry from bringing hell on earth. We were all there, complete, with our newly issued fake identities and supporting legal documentation. The team, our party of adventurers, was Deputy Taylor, AKA Taylor Everest, God's soldier and our protector, Katie Snowette, AKA Katie Divine, our empath and moral compass, Bob Sanchez, AKA Bob Cervantes, pragmatist and grumpy. Richard Seaborn, AKA Rick Liberty. That's me, the Fulcrum. And there were the three and the last of the members of the Knights Templar. Mr. Lesky, head of Midnight and Associates and leader of the Knights Templar. Sarah McGilvray, coordinator at Midnight and Associates, also a scout and infiltrator for the Knights Templar. Tiny, the driver, transport for Midnight and Associates, and the Knights Templar. Mr. Lesky, as usual for him, wore a full three-piece suit and tie, looking very much the part of a senior partner or owner of a prestigious law firm. Yet, he also wore an ornate silver belt, with one side drooped to his thigh, and the other suspending a silver dagger sheathed in a metal silver scabbard. And around his neck was a thick silver necklace, holding a large silver onk cross. Sarah McGilvray had always worn business casual clothing whenever we had met her, but now, she was wearing more militant looking attire with little lowercase KT embroidered on each piece of her clothing. Apparently the Knights Templar had a uniform and the standard of KT representing Knights Templar, always lowercase, and the T apparently is a subtle formation as a holy cross. And Sarah had a sidearm. She had a gun. I didn't expect that. Not from the nice girl that greeted us before. People have many sides, obviously. And Tiny, the blazing taxi's van driver, apparently the master of transport for the Order of the Knights Templar. Mr. Lesky raised the silver onk from around his neck up into the air. He uttered some Latin sounding incantations and he spoke. When I raise this onk into the air and utter sacred words, this room is sealed from prying eyes from this plane or others. The silence protection ends, though immediately should I return the Ankh to its rest out of my hands. And so, while I hold it, we may talk freely without worry of spies or scrying eyes. Mr. Lesky asked that we all place our hands on the celestial white marble round table with both of our hands placed palm down on the ley lines in front of our throne. Nervously, we all looked at each other and did as he requested. There was a strange vibrating sensation and a warmth where I placed my hands on the table's carved ley line. Lesky spoke. Under the eyes of God and heaven, as commander of the Knights Templar, I dub you Sir Richard of the Knights Templar. As he said the words, the Illuminati centerpiece eye glowed and pulsed purple and white hues, and shimmering light shot from it to Lesky through the 
ley lines and up to the onk that he was holding. And another shimmering ley line filled and flowed to me and up into my nose and my eyes, my mouth, my ears, everywhere. It enveloped me. It was like an aura that surrounded me. I was aglow. I felt my palms burn and prickle. I saw what looked like blood drip from them into the ley lines. And then the light, the ley lines, light, the aura, it all faded away. It was either gone or invisible. Gleski added, your blood bond is made. You are brother of God and his Knights Templar. I dub you Sir Taylor of the Knights Templar. And just as happened for me, shimmering purple and white hued lights flowed across the ley lines to Lesky and then to Deputy Taylor. And like me, she was enveloped by the light. I dub you Sir Katie of the Knights Templar. And once more, celestial lights from the center eye to Lesky, then to Katie. And she was basked and framed in an aura of purple and white light. I dub you Sir Sanchez of the Knights Templar. Even Glum Bob was basked in glowing purple and white light. And in finale, I transfer my command of the Knights Templar to the Fulcrum, Richard Seaborn. He will be the sword of the Knights Templar forevermore, lest he transfer the command himself. I will serve the commander and the sword as his advisor. Mr. Lesky said some more Latin sounding incantations and the room rumbled and it shook. The ley lines between us all, Katie, Bob, Taylor, Lesky, Sarah, Tiny and me exploded into blinding white light. I swear that I could almost see a tall winged man an angel as the flash faded and as my sight could see things more clearly so did the angel fade from my sight the room returned to normal but mr lesky still held the onk aloft he smiled so widely i had never seen anyone smile that wide and emphatically before in my entire life and he exclaimed, also out of character for Lesky to be emotional, much less so emotional. We have been heard and blessed by an angel. Heaven has recognized we are the last of the Knights Templar and you, Richard, are the fulcrum. And you will lead us to victory over Baal. We have witnessed a miracle. Each of us has been blessed. For what empowerment or influence, we cannot yet know. It is in God's hands to reveal your blessing. Blessings reveal themselves on their own time when they are intended to be unveiled and tapped. Sarah rose and brought a rolled up parchment scroll to me. She asked that I unfurl it and sign it with my blood. She handed me a thin stiletto dagger and said, this is the scroll of bonding that Zyra Milmore required you sign and make a blood vow on. You must cut your palm and place it on the scroll and repeat after me. She waited for me to cut my palm with the dagger that she had handed to me and press it down onto the scroll. It was crazy nuts. Well, but I did it. And then she said, repeat these words after me. I declare that I am the fulcrum. And I repeated them. She continued, I will decide the fate of humankind at the moment. This body leaves a mortal coil and dies. My belief in humankind 
if humans are inherently evil or good, shall judge humanity's fate. She paused. I recited her words. She continued. Whether humanity is blessed to join heaven or whether humanity is damned to hell for eternity. I will assume the title of the Sword of the Knights Templar and in doing so become the commander of the Knights Templar. She paused and again I repeated her words and she continued, I vow to destroy the tapestry of Baal and to dedicate myself to fighting the cult of Baal and the seven princes of hell. She paused, I repeated, she continued. Before God and heaven, I do vow, this is my commitment in life and soul. She waited, I completed the words. That was a lot and it was way heavy stuff to process just out of nowhere, no rehearsal, no heads up, nothing. Well, I'm again, I repeated all those words. I did what she told me. And suddenly there was a flash of purple and white light between my palm and the scroll. And Sarah took it from me, carefully rolling it back up. She inserted it into a silver metal case. Lesky said, we are the last bulwark against the seven princes of hell and they're bringing hell on earth. We are united as one force, as the Knights Templar. He said, Tiny is also a pilot. We have a cargo plane that is retrofitted with living facilities, much like a uh, recreational vehicle, an RV. It will fly anywhere you need to go with Tiny as your pilot. The plane is inconspicuous. It is an older, worn freight cargo plane. Its paint and external appearance is intentionally made to present itself as poor, unmaintained. The interior is also old, but it is well maintained, as best as one can do with old. The goal, Richard, is to metaphorically and literally fly under the radar. Should anyone visit or search the craft, Tiny's van is the only uncommon element within it, unless they discover its many hidden stashes throughout the plane. Lesky assured, of course, Tiny's van goes along in the cargo plane too. So you will have road transportation wherever you go as well. Lesky furthered, Sarah will be available to you as an infiltration expert and scout. I imagine she will also guard the Knights Templar, KT, logo, branded freight cargo plane, when you are on missions away from the plane. Lesky explained, there are secret compartments throughout the plane, like I was saying. Each is designed to store equipment, armaments, weapons, armor, currency, money, books of gold coins, tubes of diamonds, and most anything that we might anticipate is required in a mission. He added, we have coordinated with Deputy Taylor on loadouts for your mission in Prague, your hunting of Braco McDema, and retrieving the dagger of choice and your destiny. The loadouts include armaments, weapons and body armor, tools and gadgets, uh, clothing and gear, more gadgets, medical supplies, local currency, and region and city maps. We, of course, also ensure the plane is stocked with in-plane and in-field consumables. <laughs> Food, drink, and supplements. 
and we stock a small supply of stimulants should long missions require them. Please only use them in critical situations and in limited durations. They can be habit-forming. Addictive. We have placed all the items that Taylor has requested in the plane's stashes. I suggest that you reload your travel gear and clothing duffels, personal go bags, and your mission backpacks and waste packs when you're ready before you go. I smiled. If Deputy Taylor was involved in the loadout and gear planning, I am quite sure we are very well set. Yeah, we'll reload our bags before we go. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs>